So once again, time for another vlog movie review. Um, last one of these for a bit. Um, not until I go see um, July in July, Spider-Man Far From Home. So, um, got out of seeing, as you tell from the title card, Godzilla King of the Monsters. So I'm tempted to put the title card at the very end of the, the video because this movie has a very, very late title card. Like, at a... Good, it's a like, at a... It's a good thing the Directors Guild relaxed their requirements for this sort of thing level uh, late title card. Um... And this film, and we're we paying from spoilers, and in getting it to advance, uh, no spoilers in the comments until August of 28, 2019. If you do post spoilers, I will delete them, um, or otherwise remove them from visibility, so that people don't get spoiled. Uh, this movie basically picks up pretty much in the wake, right in the wake of the uh, first legendary Godzilla pictures Godzilla film, with the base opening premise effectively being, "All right, the world knows that kaiju exist now. How do they take this?" And the answer is, "Not well." Is uh, the best way to describe it. Not well at all, and like we get, we see see a bit of this in the trailers with congressional hearings, the monarch being called in front of. Okay, what do we do about these kaiju? With Congress, with with, with military leaders, congressional leaders saying, "Hey, we should just kill them all." But they don't call them kaiju; they call them titans. But we should kill them all, um, and monarch represented by Doctor Sarazawa with. Uh, in Watanabe returning, saying no. As we saw, we had the Big G fighting the Mudos, and all of our efforts to fight the Mudos failed. Actually, actually, I will back up for a second. They don't actually make this argument, which is kind of a bummer. Um, we is that like we set up like pretty well in the last movie. The best humanity could toss at these things is pretty much ineffective, and we can point big the big G at him and let him fight. In fact, that was the line from the first from the last movie: "Let them fight." But we are ineffective. We are weak, and there is little we can do. And that actually leads into the main theme, the main narrative thrust of the movie to an extent, uh, like. Part of the plot of the movie to the extent the vibe, I, the, the the expression that came to my mind a great deal over the course of watching this film is there was a African proverb which a little research found that it's Kenyan to be specific, which I I admit I first heard about from a Magic the Gathering card, from flavor text a Magic the Gathering card, but it's it's stuck in my head. It's one of the things that kind of sticks in the back of your brain and brain and never leaves. And the quote was. When elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. And when I read it, I immediately got it. That when the powerful clash, it is whoever is caught in the middle, uh, whoever is cannot escape from the scope of the clash, are the ones who suffer most. And... The and we kind of see that in the course of the film with uh, our with two of our main characters, doctors Mark and Emma Russell, um, who are two scientists who had been working with Monarch, who basically after the events of the first film had a divorce because they had a loss in the events in uh, San Francisco, and they have one child and um, there's their daughter uh, Madison, who's played by. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown, who was from uh, Stranger Things, which is on the watch list, but that aside. So, the idea of the movie then is, okay, 
you now have the kaiju going around. What do you do about this? And if you can't stop them, if you can't affect them, the answer is you cohabitate, co coexist. You find a way to coexist with them. And with the ultimate concept of this being a piece of technology that grants the ability to coexist. This happens like very early in the film. That could potentially grant that key to coexistence being misused and weaponized by forces who wish to have a much more malevolent and malign goal. And this part of the plot gets kind of a little more anime. The antagonists of the film feel... They remind me of, like, of antagonists from, like, 80s and 90s OVAs, where their motivation is... Humanity has driven the world out of balance, and thus steps must be taken to restore that balance, and if billions of people die, well then, hey, can't make omelets without making it, without breaking a few eggs. Um, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. And with the, with the ultimate thrust of the protagonist being, well, we will, we're going to stop you. So, we got that. Ah, uh, so the film go kind of goes on from there, where we have this technology getting misused and leading to the unearthment, unearthing of King Ghidorah, who is referred to originally as Monster Zero, his original name when the first film he came from, Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. Um, and in turn, other kaiju coming up and Godzilla... Joined by Mothra, because Mothra is, as always, classic good guy, um, or good girl, I would say, good gal, um, kaiju, against him. And it works really well. Like, it works really, really well. I'm really impressed by it. Uh, Phil, it's a movie which appreciates and recognizes um, the contributions and the, and the lore that people who grew up with Godzilla movies love and finds a way to incorporate that into the film in a way that fits and makes sense of the world they've created while also friendly to fan service. Like, for example, here's a minor little twist that I, get, that I can give. Um, the manga of the actress name, there's uh, Zhang Zhi. Z-I-Y-I. Um, I believe uh, is who is in the film, and she's a uh, Chinese scientist. Oh, they're, they're Chinese scientists. Oh, ah. it, well, no. She plays two characters, uh, who are a pair of scientists who are working for Monarch, uh, with background in mythology. They're twins, and they end up being very heavily connected to Mothra. So, if you're a big Mothra fan, if, you, if, you, if you're a big Godzilla fan, you know, okay, with Mothra, there's always the twins. Now, usually it's the twin fairies who are the heralds of Mothra and who speak for her. But instead here we have these characters played by a single actress, which also has happened in some of the Heisei uh, Godzilla movies, um, who, um, while not directly speaking for Mothra through psychic link or anything like that, does have an understanding of the character that they can read her intent. That sort of thing. Um, also, the film does a good job of like picking good pieces of from the classic um, Godzilla and related scores and slipping them in there, with a great example being um, the Mothra theme and, like, and the, of course, the Akira Inafube um, Godzilla theme. The Mothra theme is not sung, but it is played by the orchestra with, and used as a lead motif for the Mothra character, which it works incredibly well. So, there's, so that part works great. Um, now, if you're expecting this movie to be just two hours of kaiju fights, like 
Godzilla movies have never been that, and this movie's no exception. Um, there is a sick, like, the human plot plays a significant chunk of the movie. I've watched a bunch of Godzilla films. I'm cool with that. I dig that. I'm fine. If your Godzilla movie has, if it's like 90 minute movie and a third to a quarter of it is completely original stuff, it's cool. I dig it. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Some people are kind of upset about from like from the little perusals I've seen of reviews and that sort of thing. There's been some negative response of, oh, too much time with the humans. Uh, we need more, like, more kaiju fights, less human fights, no human plots. Oh, it's so shallow and badly written and so forth and so on. On the other hand, like, again, if you look at Godzilla movies, the big G is the, sc the star, but the humans have more plot time both for budgetary reasons and for narrative reasons. And their, and their plots put more focus, and oftentimes those plots are kind of dopey. Monster Zero, King Ghidorah, is introduced as part of an alien invasion plot in the old uh, Showa movies. And Ghidorah like, has like, almost always been a villain character, and with a couple, like one exception, I'm pretty sure has generally been like alien from space, otherwise being manu manipulated and controlled by outside forces. Godzilla Final Wars, the movie which has the most kaiju fighting of any Godzilla film, is also the Godzilla film which has an alien inv invasion plot with aliens taking control of various other kaiju, sticking them on the big G, and ultimately being thwarted by the efforts of Don Fry. Not Don Fry as himself, but Don Fry. But you get my point. That sort of thing. So, I don't have a problem with that. It's kind of campy. But I'm okay with that. Like, the narrative that the human story that is created is internally consistent and thought out in that respect. The actions of the characters make sense for the motivations that they are given. Some people, that's not enough. I'm cool with it. I dig it. Production value is fine. Um, again, the, 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 the kaiju are very expressive. That's one of the things I loved a lot about the first Legendary Pictures Godzilla movie, and which I also appreciated with um, Kong Skull Island, is the kai is in all these movies, the monsters are expressive. They are ca very much characters in ways that the beyond what the motion, just what the motion capture actors bring to the table, you get these moments of Godzilla looking humans in the eye and recognizing and acknowledging humans as something other than are the those squishy things that are underfoot sometimes. And that's really appreciated. So I, I I dig this movie a lot. I am really glad I saw it in theaters. Uh, I saw it in IMAX and the film kind of gen generally benefits from that. Um, I don't know if there was a 3D release out going on out there. The screening I saw was 2D only or the theater I saw that only had a 2D IMAX. I enjoyed the film. I'm glad I saw it in theaters. I am definitely looking forward to this, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. So, to sum up, if you're not a Godzilla believer, this isn't going to change your mind. If you do like kaiju movies, if you can't suspend your disbelief around the square cubed law, to buy into this movie and buy into the idea of how like, kaijus exist, this isn't going to help you. But if you if you enjoy kaiju movies and you want one that's a little that, that puts a little bit more thought in terms of how the world like when the kaiju show up, how the world actually reacts to it, and something beyond with the you know, with the Showa uh, Godzilla movies, even some of the Heisei Godzilla movies where. You have Godzilla and you have Kaiju, but you never have a, don't have a world which doesn't necessarily take the next step for your world of the global worldview is changed and how humans perceive their place on the planet is changed after the Kaiju show up. Uh, if you want a movie that, that think that at least thought at least thought about that in passing and has, is asking some questions, 
maybe not necessarily intending to answer them all now, but intending to answer them in a future movie, this, this film will do that for you. I would hope. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.